Welcome to uh, Thunderdance Dark 2018. We're here with Louis Mahoney, uh, winner of Best Performance in Fred Rosen's Rodney, uh, playing the titular role of Rodney. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. Uh, it's a great honor, Louis. No, it's a pleasure. And I think it's very, very encouraging to see a lot of young people here because recently I've been filming abroad and it seems like the British film industry was dying, but in fact, seeing so many young people rejuvenates my spirit about what's going to happen with the industry. It's also really worth mentioning that Mr. Mahoney, uh, for those that don't know, um, is really a legend in both screen and, and theatre in Great Britain, from the Doctor Who uh, serials of the 1970s to Miss Marple, yes, Prime Minister, to name but very few, and countless brilliant roles on stage. Um, Louis has been a, a very big presence in, in, in performing and acting in the UK and very notably and importantly was involved with racial equality in the performing arts. Um, you started the, the Black Theatre Workshop in the 70s and it would be really interesting to hear about how that came to be and your work in equality in general. Um, right, I, I, I was very much involved with uh, the Actors' Union and I was on the Equity Council. and. Um, we tried to get the committee, which was called the Colored Actors Committee, changed to Afro-Asian Committee, people of Asian or African descent, you know. But then there was the issue of some South African artists who came over with a show called Ipitombi, who then asked for refugee status. The uh, Equity Council fought for them, the Home Office gave them refugee status. And then I discovered that they were lost. They had to do some work. So I formed a company with Mike uh, Phillips, Trevor Phillips' uh, brother, called Black Theatre Workshop. And we worked with them. We did a couple of shows. And then did a very successful show called uh, Sounds of Sueto, which we took to the United Nations Doug Hammarskjöld Theatre in New York and um, in Chicago. We also did it at the Greenwood Theatre in London. And for me, it was just this sort of stuff that we needed to do because a lot of drama schools were saying we don't have a lot of black or Asian students because we don't know where they are. So we formed a booklet and looked for all the Afro-Asian possible actors who wanted to go to drama school. We also got Inner London Education Authority to make sure the drama schools set to school um, at the uh, career advisory offices in schools to encourage kids to go for drama. And now we've seen some fantastic results in young uh, people who won Oscars, in fact, from, from, from Britain. And I think it has been incredible um, and it's, it's so admirable to be speaking to someone that's done so much uh, for this change. It would just be interesting to hear your thoughts, having been so active in a, such a great time of change, how you feel about the, the industry now in terms of equality uh, in general, uh, both related to, to race and sexuality and so on and, and gender, both, both in Britain and abroad and, and your, your general feeling um, given how much has changed? It, it has changed a bit in terms of uh, performers. Um, I had a chance of going in the mid 80s to the States, but I preferred to stay here because I wanted to help to develop the industry here. Uh, Behind the camera, there's still a need for a lot of people uh, from ethnic background, a lot of women who haven't been having an opportunity, and people with disability. There's no reason why they can't actually be behind uh, uh, the camera. In terms of in front of the camera, um, there are a lot more people coming forward, but in fact, we're having a lot of problems now with a lot of people who went to America the American actors are now complaining that too many Brits are taking jobs <laughs> over there. So it's not too bad. What I don't think we, we have uh, addressed is that uh, companies like Netflix, Amazon, um, uh, a lot of uh, companies from abroad are making movies here and in Europe and BBC and Channel 4 seem not to be doing as much as they used to do. And yet there is a wealth of young British uh, 
women and men who would like to get into the industry like we've seen tonight, you know. And I think we should try and encourage the government uh, to, to sponsor people, you know. I think it's very important. I think it's not in a bad state, but it could be better. I absolutely agree, and it's really great to hear from you. One last question. Um, I, I would really, just any sort of fun anecdotes from shooting Rodney, anything that you've uh, remembered fondly, fondly in particular? Yes, um, there was this question of whatever happened to my wife. I still don't know what's happened to her, even though that brooch was found in the graveyard. And Fred was very clever not to tell me what happened. So maybe there's going to be a spin-off sometime. However, when I did Rodney, I was very, very, um, very worried about making sure animal lovers felt that I looked after the graveyard for animals. Because in Britain, you don't mess about with people's pets. <laughs> so hopefully, I'd look and bury them properly. I think that was one of the, the endearing parts of Rodney's character for sure, and maybe there is hope for Beatrice. Well, thank you so much, Louis, for coming to Thunderdance. It's been a pleasure to have you here, and congratulations for the best performance, uh, very well deserved, uh, for Rodney. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much.